Now after seeing the sample application for flight reservation, in this video we will see the user interface of HP UFT that is Unified Functional Testing. Previously it was known as HP QTP. Now to start HP UFT, I have a shortcut desktop icon, I can just double click and open it. Now if you are using some operating system like Windows 7 and previous operating system, you have to go to the start button and you have some uh, all programs in that you have the HP software folder under that you have the HP software, HP UFT. But now I have on the shortcut on the desktop, so I can just double click and open it. I'll just double click and open it this way. Yeah. Once it opens, it will give me a dialog box that do you want to install a license? It is not a license version. So if I want to install a license, I can click on this place. It will give me the details like the software license it will expire in 30 days. So that's a validity for 30 days because I've installed today itself. Otherwise, without license, if you want to continue, I can just click on this continue part. Once I click on continue, I'll get this kind of dialog box. This is nothing but an add-in dialog box. Add-in in the sense, whichever, whichever software platform I want to test. For example, if I want to test Yahoo, Gmail or LinkedIn, any website, I'll use this web add-in. If I want to test any mobile application, I'll select this mobile add-in. If I want to test Java, so I'll select this Java add-in. So based on your environment, on which your application is there, you can select the different add-ins. Right now what I'll do is, I'll select this Web Visual Basic and ActiveX by default and I'll click on OK. Remember, whichever add-ins are required, only select that. Do not select which are not required, otherwise it will slower your performance of UFT. Now I'll just click on OK. Okay. So once I click on OK, that's a welcome screen which will give. Yeah, that is the startup page which I'll get now. Now since it's the latest version, 12.53 version, the user interface is very smart and very easy to understand that. Now that's a startup page and it gives me some options easily to navigate different places. Like if I want for GUI testing forum or different forums, if I want to jump, I can jump directly from here. On the left hand side, if you see that is a solution explorer, the first one solution explorer it will give me different folders different actions and sets and different tests now what are the meaning of everything we'll see in detail in the coming videos this is just an introduction part next is i have some toolbox where i have different options again available and uh, if you see there's an output tab there's a active screen tab and the data tab so these tabs are used for different purposes at any point of time if any tab gets closed for example i'm on the solution tab and if this solution tab, this solution tabs get closed, how do I open that solution tab? I can just go to this view and if you see that's a solution explorer tab. So if I click on this solution explorer, you can see that solution explorer is visible again. So these are different tabs which are available here. If you want, you can remove, if you want, you can keep on adding more tabs, right? On the right hand side, if you see there's a properties dialog box. Now this properties dialog box will give me properties about the test, about the application, about the components and everything. So based on the item which I've selected, it will give me the different properties. Now above that, if you see there's a menu bar and that's a file view resources. Since we are using the latest version, the menu bars are more expanded here. Previously, there were less menu bars available. Now below that, if you see there's some toolbar which is given new open and create. Now if I create a new one, suppose if I want to create a new file, I'll just click on this new on the startup page or I can just go to the file menu bar, click on new. Otherwise, I can just click on this new part that's a shortcut toolbar, any one of them. So I'll just start with the creating a new file. Okay, so I'll just click on this new. Okay, so when I, once I click on that new, I'll get a dialog box. It says which file do you want to create? A GUI test, a API test, business process or do you want to create business process flow? Right now, I'll select only GUI test, graphical user interface, the basic which we'll be looking for. Next is give some name for your GUI test. The name is GUI test 3. You can remove that name and you can give login test, uh, uh, let's say friend request, submit request, anything. So you can give and the location of the file where the test will be saved. The test file will be saved itself. So right now, I'll keep the name as GUI test. Now observe the menu bars. Once I click on that place, the menu bars will change, right? I'll just click on this create. Once I click on create, it jumped from startup page, it went to the action and remember the name of the test was GUI test 3. So if I keep on expanding that, if you see inside that GUI test, there's one action. Again, there's an action, there's no, nothing but a local repository and everything is visible in the solution explorer. So solution explorer is nothing but hierarchical manner, all the data has been collected into that particular folder itself. So it gives me the relationship. 
right now if you observe when i went from starter page to the action page the menus the menu bar increased right there are few more extra menu bars added in the recent version of alm right below those menu bars if you see there are some toolbars which are given here options which are on the toolbar those are available in the menu bars right for your easy navigation they have been given on the toolbar itself so i hope you're able to understand the user interface about hp uft the 12.53 version the latest version in the market today that's all for this video